which is better to live in, Brisbane or Perth? This city comparison will run through some of the differences between those two cities so that you can decide where to live in Australia. I'm Lisa from Australian Travel and Migration blog dreamingofdanander.com. I live in Sydney but I have lived in both Perth and Brisbane so I'm going to run through some of the differences that I've noticed as well as some of the important factors like cost of living, the cost of rent and the cost of buying properties there. I've also written a blog post on this which I'll link to below if you want to go through in more detail and I've got lots of other city overviews and city comparison reviews on there as well. I've also got a free Australian city comparison chart if you're trying to decide where to live here so I'll put a link to that below. The first difference is a really big one and that is their location. They're on opposite sides of Australia, they're very far apart, over 4,000 kilometres and if you drove from one to another along the fastest route it would take around 46 hours. Brisbane is on the east coast of Australia, sort of around halfway up and that's a very populated and developed coastline so most of the major cities in Australia run along there. So you've got Cairns, Brisbane, Sydney and then down at the bottom you've got Melbourne and Adelaide and Canberra's a little bit inland. And then Perth is at the southern end of the western coast of Australia, so the very, very opposite side. And Perth is known as one of the most isolated cities in the world because of its location. Even to fly from Brisbane to Perth would take over four hours. The second difference is their populations. Brisbane is a more populated city than Perth. Perth has a population of around 2.1 million inhabitants and that makes it the fourth most populated city in Australia. But the suburbs in Perth stretch along the coastline really far so it is actually known as the longest city in the world. Brisbane has 2.5 million inhabitants and that makes it the third most populated city in Australia. I would personally say that I think Brisbane feels like a bigger city and it's a bit busier. Um, they're both very lovely cities, Perth's very scenic, very pretty, but I would definitely say that Brisbane does have a bit of a bigger, busier feel. The third difference between Brisbane and Perth is their climates. They're in very different locations in Australia so they do have different climates. They will both feel like very warm to hot cities if you're from somewhere cold like Britain like me but they are different. Perth has a temperate Mediterranean climate which is much drier than Brisbane. Brisbane has a humid subtropical climate which means that in the summertime they get a lot of rain and they get a lot of storms. During the summertime Perth is slightly hotter than Brisbane in the daytime it's around 2 degrees hotter so the average temperature is about 31 degrees whereas in Brisbane it's about 29 degrees. However because Brisbane is a lot more humid it will feel a lot stickier and uncomfortable. Another big difference which I didn't realise actually until somebody wrote a big comment in one of my other videos is that Perth is very very windy. It's the windiest city in Australia I think and one of the windiest cities in the world. Um, when I lived in Perth I left there just as summer was starting and I think that's just when the, the big windy season starts so even though it has this lovely hot summer it's very windy. Note that these are just the average temperatures so the temperature can fluctuate wildly. In both of those cities I've had temperatures over 40 degrees so it can get really really hot. Overnight in summertime Perth is slightly cooler than Brisbane around 18 and a half degrees whereas Brisbane is around 20 and a half degrees. During the winter Brisbane is a little bit warmer during the daytime that's about 20 degrees on average maximum and Perth is around 18 degrees maximum. Overnight Perth is slightly cooler and drops to around 8 degrees and Brisbane drops to about 9 and a half degrees. Both cities are very sunny cities so you will get lots of beautiful weather. Perth is the sunniest city in Australia and it has an average of around 139 clear days a year. Brisbane has about 113 which is still a lot so they are both great if you love blue skies and sunny weather which I think most of us do. To give you a comparison Melbourne only has around 45 clear days a year so it's very very different. This, the level of sunshine does vary across Australia greatly. The rainfall is quite different so they both have a similar number of rainy days per year but it falls across different times of the year and Brisbane has heavier rain so it has a greater volume of rain than Perth. Brisbane gets more rain in the summer and Perth gets more rain in the winter. In the middle of summer Perth only gets one or two days of rain a month and Brisbane tends to get eight or nine. Then in the middle of winter Brisbane only gets about four days of rain a year whereas Perth gets about 14 or 15. So in a nutshell Perth is 
nice and hot and sunny in the summer but quite windy and it has cooler wetter winters um, Brisbane also hot in the summer but has a lot of rain and it's very humid and then it has lovely clear blue skies in the winter Number four is beaches. Now this is a really, really major difference between Brisbane and Perth. Perth has lots of beautiful beaches, really big, long white beaches, really long coastline. It is really, really stunning. Brisbane is on the coast, but it has mostly mud flats. So it does have some beaches. There's one called Redcliffe, I know, but it's a little bit further out of the city, but it doesn't have these, you know, absolutely loads of gorgeous beaches like Perth does. So if you want to live in a beach suburb, then Perth would be a better option. However, in Brisbane, you can get to beaches easily. So if you want to live in the city and then just go to beaches on weekends, you can go down to the Gold Coast in around an hour and a half and you can get up to the Sunshine Coast in around an hour and a half too and they've got absolutely gorgeous beaches. And you've also got some lovely islands off Brisbane, you've got Morton Island, you've got North Stradbroke Island, so you can easily live the city lifestyle and get to beaches on the weekend. Brisbane does have a man-made beach actually in the city at South Bank and a man-made lagoon as well, which is actually really cool to have in the city with the, uh, the big skyscrapers opposite. Difference number five is daylight saving. Actually, it's more of a similarity. So most of the states and territories in Australia have daylight saving. So in the warmer half of the year, the clocks go forward an hour and you get more daylight in the evening. But both Perth and Brisbane are in states that do not have daylight saving. So they will get darker a bit earlier than some of the other cities. In the height of summer, the sun goes down in Perth around 7.30 and in Brisbane, it's about 6.45. Just as a comparison in Sydney and Melbourne, it's more like 8.30. Difference number six is the cost of living in Brisbane and Perth. I know this is a really important one and it will probably affect which one you can move to, particularly the price of properties. Property prices to buy have changed a lot in Australia during the pandemic and Brisbane has become really popular and it has shot up in price. A lot of cities have gone up a lot in price during that time, but Brisbane became very, very popular. A lot of people chose to leave the colder states like New South Wales and Victoria and move up to Queensland. I have got another video and a blog post on property prices in all the capital cities in Australia and the rental prices too, so check those out if you want to learn more about that. According to a property report by CoreLogic in October 22, so CoreLogic are the big property data provider in Australia, the median house price in Brisbane was $841,000 and in Perth it was $594,000. So that's 44% higher in Brisbane on average. So that is a very, very, very big difference. The difference in rental prices isn't quite so big. The median weekly rent for a house in Brisbane is $575 a week, whereas in Perth it's $520 a week. To rent an apartment or flat, it's also a bit cheaper in Perth. The median weekly rent in Perth is $450 a week, whereas in Brisbane it's $475 a week, so not a big difference there. I found a report on Budget Direct comparing the cost of utilities between Perth and Brisbane. The average cost of electricity, heating, water and garbage for an 85 metre squared apartment in Brisbane is $170 a month and in Perth $194 a month, so it's slightly more expensive in Perth. Public transport was higher in Brisbane at $198 on average for a monthly public transport pass compared to $139 in Perth. Groceries were found to be around 3% cheaper in Perth than in Brisbane and restaurant prices were 5% lower in Perth. Difference number seven is the lifestyle in Brisbane and Perth. So I really, really enjoyed living in both of those cities. And I think if you don't want to live in a really, really big sprawling city like Sydney or Melbourne, then both Brisbane or Perth will be really, really good options. I thought Perth was really, really pretty. It's got a beautiful big blue river. The city's right on the river. There's dolphins there. It's beautiful sunsets. It's got the amazing beaches. So really, really lovely scenery in Perth. And I think Brisbane has got some really lovely green areas along the river. I found it's maybe a bit more urban looking than Perth and uh, probably a little bit more built up. Although when I lived in Perth, there were just cranes everywhere. So I actually think both cities have seen loads and loads of growth since I lived in them. So, um, but Brisbane's got really beautiful botanic gardens on the riverside and it really seems to have a lot going on. Like I feel like maybe because it doesn't have the beaches, they've really put a lot of effort into the city and events and it just always seems to be kind of 
bustling and have fun things to do and I think it's got a really good family atmosphere in Brisbane it's got lots of places you could take kids like parkland areas and really really fun city Perth uh, maybe a little bit more laid back and chilled than Brisbane I did leave there just as summer was starting and it felt like it was going to come alive in the summer like there started to be lots of pop-up events and things and markets and so it felt a bit like it was kind of dead in the winter time and then it was sort of coming to life so i do think summer in perth would be a little bit more lively you'll find lots to do in both cities they've both got nightlife it might not be the absolutely big bustling kind of culture of melbourne but they've still got you know nightclubs and restaurants and all of those sorts of things um i think brisbane has kind of become a lot more trendier and cosmopolitan over the last sort of decade or two i lived there a really long time ago but i've visited a couple of times and it seems to have a lot more kind of cool cafes and things now difference number eight is the nearby holiday destinations to brisbane and perth they're both on really beautiful sections of coastline so you'll be spoiled for choice in either city really um so brisbane is in queensland so as i said the east coast is a lot more developed and populated so you can easily fly to other cities like Cairns or Sydney or Melbourne quite quickly whereas for Perth if you wanted to go to those cities you've got a bit longer you've got maybe four or five hours in a plane um, however Perth does have a really gorgeous coastline so I did a really big road trip from Perth going south and then east across to Adelaide and you've got the lovely Margaret River region south of Perth so you've got big surf beaches lots of wineries um, really good food you've got lovely holiday towns like Yellingup and Dunsborough which have got just amazing beaches and lovely national parks and if you want to drive a little bit further you can go down and visit the lovely beaches in Albany or Denmark and you've got lots of other amazing national parks and then Esperance which has these bright white beaches and turquoise water and kangaroos on the beach it's really really amazing and then also north of Perth if you want to go up and get a bit of winter sunshine you can fly to Broome that's popular or just go on a road trip north up to some of the other national parks and from Brisbane you've got really really lovely like typically holiday destinations so Queensland is really the the kind of tropical holiday place in Australia so you can get to places like the Whitsundays which are really popular and you've got the Gold Coast and Sunshine Coast as I mentioned which is really close you can also head up to Cairns you could do road trips either north or south I did an amazing road trip from Brisbane to Sydney loads and loads of holiday towns there on the way you've got Coffs Harbour Port Macquarie you're just really really sport for choice really in Brisbane you can also go inland and see some of the hinterland areas too in terms of islands Perth has Rottnest Island really close by which has got just stunning stunning scenery it's really undeveloped you can't take a car over or anything um it's got these amazing beaches and you can cycle around it and you've got penguin island a little further south i went there that's um off the coastline in Shoalwater at rockingham and that's quite cool lots of seabirds and things lots of nature and then brisbane has morton island i went over for a day trip the last time i visited brisbane that's amazing it's got these just a lovely lovely beach it's got a really nice big holiday resort so if you want a really chilled out holiday that's perfect you can also go camping on other parts of the island you've also got North Stradbroke Island I went for a quick visit there that's really really beautiful too so you have got lots and lots of choices for holidays to be honest wherever you live in Australia you're probably going to have a lot of choices for holidays unless you go and live in the middle of the outback or somewhere Difference number nine is how modern the architecture is. Again, more of a similarity, but I think Brisbane and Perth are very kind of modern looking cities and in the cities they're quite kind of shiny new skyscraper buildings, whereas Sydney and Melbourne and Adelaide actually have, I would say, a bigger proportion of older buildings. So they've got the more historical architectures. But if you like the kind of new look, then I would say Perth and Brisbane are both going to be good for you okay that's it for my differences between brisbane and perth i hope that's helpful if you've got any other insights do let me know in the comments make comments to help people because i know that locals have lots lots more insights than me if they've lived there for years and years let me know in the comments if you're thinking of moving to either of those cities or if you're still trying to decide where you want to live i really love both cities i like them in different ways i was a student when i was in brisbane so it's a bit more of a different lifestyle for me i was living on campus um I would say I prefer Perth's scenery, just gorgeous beaches, beautiful river, really, really pretty. And I would say I preferred Brisbane for the kind of city vibe, like the more going on and stuff. They're both fantastic cities, so good luck making a decision if you're moving over here.
and make sure you check out my blog for lots of city overviews and city comparisons in Australia. Please like and subscribe for more videos on life and travel in Australia. Thanks for watching.